Hi, I'm Angie Mako. I guide intuitive women leaders to overcome overwhelm and to heal from the hidden grief so that they can create a life that they love. When they're relaxed, they feel more supported and free to do so. And today I want to talk to you about six steps to heal your hidden grief and increase your impact. Um, the reason grief is hidden is because we don't know it's a problem and it's, it lies in our subconscious below the, the awareness of our mind. Um, this blog will provide you with a strategy to help you heal from this grief and have greater impact. Does it ring true for you that if you feel relaxed, supported, and free, that you're going to be more impactful and you'll be more creative and you'll be able to create the business and the life that your soul longs for? So intuitive women leaders need a new paradigm. More on that in a second. So this new paradigm is that focusing on yourself is not selfish. This isn't always easy for women to get. When you focus on yourself holistically and respect yourself, you will actually be thinking more of others. You won't be as self-protective from a place of, you know, um, keeping yourself safe. So when you do your own inner work by healing the grief and healing the trauma from the past, you actually are much more effective and you have more impact. That's why you should care about it, because you will have more impact. You will overcome overwhelm when you heal this grief. You'll stop being so distracted and overwhelmed and overworking, and um, you'll be able to parent yourself more from a place of self-compassion and understanding. So what are the six steps to healing hidden grief? Number one is you have to shift your paradigm. Okay. So number one, shift your paradigm. Be ready to get your needs and your wants met in a healthy way by asking for them. Um, don't be ashamed of your needs and desires. We are human after all. So do you always put yourself last, you know, after your kids, your spouse, and after everyone else? Um, if so, do you feel resentful as a result of that and unappreciated? Because resentment is a byproduct of self-sacrifice and people-pleasing. Um, we're, we're taught that, you know? And so my suggestion here is give until you resent it. Receive your good as well, right? That's all, that law of circulation, give and receive. The second one is look at workaholic tendencies. Why do you work so hard? Are you more task driven than people driven? If you're at a Christmas party or some party, do you, are you the one doing the dishes at the end while everyone else is connecting? I mean, look at this. Why do you work so hard? Um, suggestion is to set boundaries. Yeah, so, so set boundaries about how many hours your work, play, take planned vacations, that kind of thing. Number three is to see yourself holistically and take self-care seriously. Um, you know, you're a person, a whole person with physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs, holistic. And see yourself as having like a table, four legs to a table that represent those four areas. And when one leg gets out of balance, the table will wobble and fall over. So respect yourself in this way. When I see people who avoid self-care, there's a part of them that actually doesn't respect themselves. They don't value themselves. If we have a car, we take care of it, right? We put new oil in it. We watch the tires and, and the engine and all this. Um, we have to do the same for our bodies. So uh, if, if we value ourselves, we will take care. I recommend a journal, tap, meditate, uh, daily practice. You can find it out on my website at harmonyharbor.com. All right, number four is to set healthy energetic boundaries and discern what is you versus them. A lot of intuitive women leaders who are often very empathic, they, they don't know what their feelings and thoughts and so forth are versus somebody else's. There's that mingling of our energy with another. So one thing that I do to really help with that is I do a daily energy routine by Donna Eden. And in the blog, there's a link to her energy routine. There's also a link to the thing I referenced just a second ago called the journal tap and meditate practice. There's a link in there. So what I love about this energy routine and why I highly recommend it is it is another holistic practice that looks at you from all four angles, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and it helps to protect my energy, not to keep others away from me rigidly, but to actually respect myself and my own boundaries. Boundaries allow us to stay true to ourselves. Number five, 
review your impact without harsh self-judgment. You know, we can really look and glean some eye-opening information about ourselves by looking at the trail we've blazed so far. You know, what impact are we having on other people? Um, are there any patterns that we can tell about ourselves from this history? Um, you know, there's a saying that results are often harsh but always true. Uh, when we look at our results, it requires courage um, because, you know, we might blame ourselves, we might guilt and shame ourselves. So it's important when you do look at your impact that you do it from this place of self-love. Like, hey, the past is over, we did the very best that we can, and now we're gonna move forward. And so that's what I recommend is be easier on yourself when you look at your results. Um, today's a new day, and just start small and ask for the willingness and the ability to see how you might have been deceiving yourself. Number six, find a healthy balance of taking responsibility. And what I mean is that, you know, when it comes to you versus other people, do you take over responsibility for what they do? As intuitive leaders who are empathic, we often will do that. Or do you avoid taking responsibility for your part in relationships? We need to set healthy boundaries of what we will and won't tolerate for ourselves and for others. So when you ha set healthy boundaries for yourself, sometimes people leave your lives. And it's not anything that you wanna be all upset about. Um, it can be hard, but don't blame yourself for I have this, is it their stuff exercise that I would like for you to take a look at. The first question is, did you do anything that you're aware of to hurt this person? And then if you did or didn't, have an honest conversation and ask them, hey, are we good? Um, if they let you know that you've hurt them, you can apologize for your part, even if you didn't intend to hurt them. So you, you don't have to own their accusation if it's not your truth, but you can acknowledge it and you can help them to feel seen and understood. And sometimes this may be enough to clear the air and heal the relationship so you can move forward. If not, realize that people have their own beliefs and they'll make decisions about you that are outside of your control. And in this case, you need to give yourself permission to move on without feeling ashamed of your impact. You can find a lesson in this and do your best to not repeat it and have negative impact in future relationships. So here's a, just a summary of what we've learned so far. One, you deserve to have your needs met in a healthy way. Two, stop workaholic tendencies, allow yourself to slow down, quiet the mind, and get present to what is really going on for you. Three, see yourself holistically, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, and begin to take self-care seriously. Begin a daily journal, tap, and meditate practice. And number four, learn to discern your energy from others' energy by doing Donna Eden's daily energy routine that I love. Five, review your impact or results without harsh self-judgment and then course correct. And number six is begin taking responsibility where needed and clear the air on current relationships that are important to you. Where necessary, move forward without self-condemnment. So I'm here to support you. Uh, I have various free events um, that will help you in this grief relief for women leaders. And so check out my website, harmonyharbor.com, and I want to support you in a way that you've probably never been supported before. I've been there. I've been through the, the fire of grief, and I've come out on the other side, and I'm just really ready to be here. I'm standing by to support you. So I hope you'll reach out at harmonyharbor.com. Thanks so much.